Please be seated. <laughs> President Garassi has invited all parents who are sitting in the back to move up, if you'd like. My name is Steve Santos Bello, and I've had the privilege of uh, being intern chaplain this semester. I want to welcome you all, family, friends, faculty, administrators, and most importantly, graduates, to the <laughs> welcome to the baccalaureate service of graduating class 2014. Wagner College has historically been associated with the Lutheran tradition of Christianity. The college was originally an institution that trained students in preparation for service in society through various professions, including congregational ministry. While no longer officially tied to any denomination, Wagner maintains a rich tradition of developing the whole person and celebrating spiritual diversity represented in its student body. This service is meant to model that commitment by drawing from various traditions in this celebration of our graduating class. I want to apologize for two errors in the program. The current Buddhist and Hindu chaplains associated with Wagner are Dr. Kenneth Boylan and Sir Dira Chayatanya, respectively. Together with our other chaplains, these spiritual leaders provide their time and services to help foster an interfaith community on campus and to serve the spiritual needs of our student body. Throughout the service, I will ask each of our chaplains to come up and offer a blessing from their tradition. We are grateful to have them here today to celebrate with the, the rest of the Wagner community. <coughs> to begin the service, please join me in a responsive reading. The words can be found in your program. I will begin by reading the first line and every other line after that, and you can participate by reading what is in bold. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. For in your wisdom you have found us. You feed the hungry and clothe the naked. We bless you and praise your name forever. You set free those who are bound. We bless you and praise your name forever. You raise up those whose courage falters. We bless you and praise your name forever. You provide for our every need. Accept our grateful praises. You have called us from all peoples. We rejoice and bless your name forever. You bless your people with peace. We bless you and praise your love. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. For in your wisdom you have formed us. Yeah. 
Dr. Abraham Unger is an assistant professor in government and politics here at Wagner and director of urban programs. Professor Unger is also our campus rabbi and the advisor to Hillel. We are pleased to have him here to provide a blessing from the Jewish tradition. It's nice when blessings get applause. <laughs> In the original biblical Hebrew dialect, uh, a blessing upon reaching special occasions sounds as follows. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shechianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu lazman hazeh, which translates in contemporary English as, Blessed art thou, Lord our God, Master of the universe, who has permitted us to reach this season in our lives. Let us say, Amen. Dr. Tahir Kukikai is an imam at the Albanian Cultural Center on Staten Island. Dr. Tahir is committed to serving the Muslim community on Staten Island and at Wagner. He is an active member of the interfaith dialogue taking place on Staten Island, and he is a sought after speaker on US Muslim relations. He has served the Wagner community for eight years, and we are pleased to have him here with us today to share a blessing from the Islamic tradition. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. I'll try to be short as uh, Rabbi. <laughs> Although Imams and Rabbis usually they, they they don't get a go that that fast. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik Yom Din. Ya kana abdu wa iya kana istaeen. Ahdin al Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladin an Amta Alehim. Ghair al Maghdub Alehim. Wal al Dalin. Which means all praises due to Almighty God, the creator of the world, the Lord of the life, Lord of the death, Lord of the hereafter. We worship you and we seek your help and guidance in our life. We want to be of those that you are pleased with of them and help us to be always successful in our lives. Almighty God, bless this these graduates and their families and the staff of Wagner College and we pray to Almighty God for those girls that have been kidnapped may Almighty God send relief for them. Amen.
insight and my wisdom. Those who know me know my love. I am Christopher Orvetz is the Catholic campus minister associated with the Archdiocese of New York. Christopher serves the Catholic community of Wagner by hosting masses and organizing services around Christian holidays. He is diligent in connecting students with the life of the church represented on Staten Island. Christopher, please lead us in a Christian blessing. Good afternoon, graduates, families of graduates, and Wagner faculty, faculty, staff, and community. Uh, Steve was generous enough to allow me to, uh, to give a few minute uh, reflection right now uh, in lieu of the blessing. This afternoon, I would like to share a gospel reading from the Christian faith for our graduates, taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you could do nothing. Graduates, you have fought the good fight and you have finished the race. When I recall my graduation seven years ago, I remember that it was filled with celebration, sometimes too much, but also Thanksgiving. I was thankful for my parents who supported me throughout college, for my roommates who woke me up before breakfast on many mornings, and who would walk across the stage to receive their diplomas with me and I was thankful for God. God has given us, first of all, our parents. God has given us our intelligence so that we may use our gifts to improve the lives of others around us. 
God has sustained us through, through in our studies, in our relationships, through tragedy and loss, and at every moment. God has created each of us in his image to love and be loved. I chose this reading today because in the words of Jesus, whom Christians believe is the Son of God, our purpose and direction in life always is found when we include God, when we walk with God, when we listen to God. God is the vine grower, we are the vines. God remains in us as far as we choose to remain in Him. Graduates, this week you begin a new chapter of life. Much of your joy in due is due in part because of the next chapter is new full of wonder and opportunities. Pope Francis, who Christians and non-Christians have come to know because of his media coverage and because of his compelling witness to charity, reminds us that God is forever young and constant is a constant source of newness. After celebrating ends this week, your joy in the coming days, months, and years depends upon how much you remain with the source of all newness, which we recognize as God. Graduates, to live a life of joy is to live a life with God. This does not mean that trials and challenges will come, because they surely will, and will begin when, when you see Wagner in your rearview mirror as you leave. But God will prune you so your joy will always grow. God will remain with you so you will bear fruit. God loves you and asks you each day to remain in his love. God bless you. Dr. Kenneth Bylin is the Buddhist chaplain associated with Wagner College. Kenneth is an ordained Soto Buddhist priest and spiritual head of the Zen community of Staten Island. Dr. Bylin is the founder and president of the Verrazano Foundation and the John W. Lavelle Preparatory Charter School, which welcomes and integrates students living with emotional challenges. He has led weekly meditation circles here on campus for both the Wagner and larger community. We're pleased to have Kenneth lead us in a Buddhist blessing. Thank you. Uh, I'm delighted and honored to be here as part of this celebration of diversity. Congratulations at this wonderful moment to the faculty, to the parents, and of course to the graduates. Zen is really a tradition of stories, and I had planned to read you a little Zen story. Uh, the rabbi raised the bar on brevity. I'm going to tell you the abbreviated version of it. <laughs> Zen, Zen is full of stories about rela stories of relationships between teachers and students. This is one of my favorites. Most of these stories go way back to China and feature uh, old Chinese guys. This was uh, Sing Yen and Kui Shan. Sing Yen at that time was a very young monk uh, struggling to find the way and he went to his teacher Kui Shan and said, uh, you know, tell me the way, show me the way. I want to know how to go. And uh, Kui Shan said, no. Uh, first of all, uh, I can't tell you. And second of all, what good would it do for me to tell you? Because then you would have my answer, not your answer. Well, at that time, Hsing Yen was really discouraged, and he figured, I, I'm not going to go on with all this studying. I just got to find something useful to do with my life. And he found himself this little temple out in the hills that was sort of run down, and he took care of it, and every day, he would sweep the, the dirt around, around the temple, all the leaves and things that had, had fallen down. And he's sweeping one day after years. He's been sweeping for years. And one day he's sweeping with this you know, broom and whew, this uh, pebble goes flying across the yard and hits a bamboo stalk that's growing there and goes thwack. And when the Sing Yen heard that, Suddenly, the world opened, his mind opened, and he had a great awakening. And he went and he got, he got washed and he put on clean robes. And he went and he bowed in the direction of Kui Shan's temple and he said, Thank you, teacher. 
Because if you had told me the answer, I never would have had this experience. Uh, I think as, as you go forward, graduates, the, the memories of, of, of college, which will stand out, I think, will be of the questions which were left for you to answer for yourselves. And you're all going to do wonderfully, I know it. Congratulations. Sandra, that was spectacular. Just spectacular. And I, I know we've done this just a second ago, but let's a round of applause for the spectacular choir under the direction of Dr. Wesley. Before I introduce Bishop Rimbo. Let's go back over this refrain. 
I am here, I am with you, I have called, do you hear me? I just, this, I am here, I am with you, I have called, do you hear me? I hope for the graduates as you leave Wagner, <clears throat> you feel that we have been with you. That we have been for you. And that as you leave, you really don't leave. That you stay with us in spirit and hopefully in presence at times. And that the school has become for you, this wonderful community that you're part of, this wonderful set of values, this mission about deep learning and broad learning, applied learning for social good, for social purpose. I hope that message, you hear that message over and over in your head and that this wonderful place continues to be one of the homes which you'll return and that it's a home which you'll invite others who will follow you to Wagner and help them in their careers and in their journey to Wagner. You mean so much to us and it's hard to part with you. Tomorrow will be a hard day for us. Joyous day in many ways, but a hard day because you've, you've added so much to this community and lived the mission of this college in so many different ways. So my, my heartfelt congratulations to each and all of you. Robert Allen Rimbo is the Bishop of the Metropolitan New York Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And that's the church that founded us uh, first in 1883 in Rochester, New York as a pro-seminary uh, in that part of the country where the Industrial Revolution was taking place from Syracuse across New York to Rochester and Buffalo through to the Midwest all the way to Detroit. And the founders of the pastors who founded that pro-seminary, which became ultimately Wagner College, were there to develop more support for immigrants, to support those new Americans who were trying to find their way in the world. At that college, at that high school seminary, one graduate was Frederick Sutter. We're on the Sutter Oval today. And Frederick Sutter was a boyhood uh, genius of sorts. He graduated from the seminary in 1888 and then came to what was then a very rural Staten Island, Staten Island and New York City only become incorporated the five boroughs in 1898. So you can imagine what was here. There was just the ferry and farms and, and the like. And he founded, he became the pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church just down the hill in Stapleton. And then, of course, the intention was to form a college, but there was no room in Rochester, New York uh, to do that. And here we had a piece of land that was owned by the Kennard family of the Kennard Shipping and a bit of the Vanderbilt estate because the Vanderbilts who formed a lot of the railroads and the like and then Grand Central Station and so on had, a, had their home here on Staten Island. So we convinced the powers that be to form a college and come to Staten Island in 1918. We really officially became a college in 1929. And this was the founding church. We were Wagner Memorial Lutheran College. Uh, and we stayed with that name up until the late 50s when we just became Wagner College. And in the late 60s, around 1970 actually, we formally separated amicably from the proprietary relationship with the church. But when we think about who we are, what we do, how you've learned, what you've done with your knowledge, that essential mission of educating people broadly and deeply, deeply spiritually as well, to be educated to do good in the world, that mission has really never changed. When we became a college, the first um, lay president in 1935, Clarence Stoughton, uh, said in the, his inaugural speech, probably on this oval, he said, we want, we're a, we're, we're a liberal arts college and that means certain things. That means developing free speech and a sense of, of, uh, of liberal learning, of liberating yourself to look, see the world wide and deep, to be critical thinkers, evaluative thinkers, not just regurgitators of knowledge, uh, to be able to use knowledge in a, in a positive way. He said, but we're also Lutheran and that has a particular call to us. He said, but what we mean by this is we don't want to be a Lutheran college 
uh, that just produces more Lutherans. We probably never had anything but a minor small minority of Lutheran students at any given time. But he said, I want, we want our Catholic students to be the best Catholics they can be, our Jewish students to be the best Jewish people they can become, and so on and so forth, he marched through. So even in the beginning years of the college, and by the way, we became co-ed two years after we opened, which was very remarkable at the time, um, we were an open and exclusive, inclusive community, and this church, this Evangelical Lutheran Church, really gave us those founding values. And Bishop Rimbo, who will speak to us now, is the representative of that church, and, and he lives these values every day. He's a wonderful trustee at Wagner College. He's helped support the chaplaincy and other opportunities for Wagner students to go abroad, uh, particularly in the Middle East, and Rabbi Unger was part of that at one time. And we're bringing people together in the Middle East around organizations like Seeds for Peace, bringing Palestinians and Jews and Christians together to talk about a better world and a better future for themselves. So it's my distinct pleasure to bring forward Bishop Brimbo. Bob. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to speak at this baccalaureate service. Last year, the weather was much more deplorable <laughs> than it is this year. Um, it's a bit better this year. Most, most people blame lousy weather on the clergy, <laughs> but at Wagner, I blame it on him. <laughs> On behalf of the Metropolitan New York Synod and the entire Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, I offer congratulations to all of you who graduate today. I greet my friends and colleagues, President Richard Garassi. I also uh, want to ask for your prayers for uh, Dr. Warren Prochi, who is the chair of our board, who is um, undergoing some health problems at this time. I greet the other members of the board of trustees with whom I'm privileged to serve, the faculty and other members of the Wagner College community, and above all, family members and friends and you, the honored graduates of 2014. Above all, you. From Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You are fascinating. You lose 50 to 150 strands of hair a day. Some of us more than that. You shed 10 billion flakes of skin a day. Over every 28 days, you get completely new skin. Isn't that amazing? And every nine years, your body is renewed. You are fascinating. And yet your body, in the midst of this relentless shedding and dying and changing and renewing, in the midst of all of that, it continues to remember to be you. Strand by strand, flake by flake, atom by atom. Your body is made up of about 75 trillion cells. And if most of you stand next to me, you realize that there is some disparity in size. <laughs> You'll have to admit that 75 trillion is a rough estimate, more or less 75 trillion cells. 
And every one of those cells contains hundreds of thousands of molecules with six feet of DNA in every cell containing over three billion letters of coding. These cells are a potent blend of matter and memory, bones and hair and blood and teeth, and at the same time, personality and essence and predispositions and habits. Millions of cells drifting through the universe, assembled and configured and finely tuned at this second to be you. Fascinating you, but inevitably moving the next second to be other things and other people. The atoms that make you, you, in this very second may have earlier been a part of a stork, or Mars, or a mushroom, or a squid, or a coconut, or Ohio or Lady Gaga. <laughs> Think about that. Don't ask me how. I get this from other people. Scientists tell me this stuff. Don't ask me how it all works. But this I do know. This I do know. You are fascinating. You Today and every day are crowned, as the psalm says, you are crowned with glory and honor. You are large and small, strong and weak, formidable and faint, reflecting the image of the divine and formed from dust. I know a few of you. But even with that limited knowledge, I can also safely declare that you are an exotic blend of awesome and pathetic. <laughs> an exotic blend of extraordinary and boring. See, you are fascinating. You are you, a phenomenon that simply did not exist here for billions of years. And today, we rejoice in you. A little lower than God, the psalm says. Crowned not only with mortarboards, at least tomorrow, but more importantly, crowned with glory and honor. Now I'm treading on shaky ground here, my brother Abe. But the ancient Hebrews had a word for the import, the gravitas, the reality of this phenomenon, the awareness of this importance. They called it kavod. I'll try to explain that sense, that awareness, because I think it's important for today. Kavod is what happens when you are exchanging the usual how are you with a person whom you see regularly, only on this particular day, she doesn't respond with her normal, fine, how are you? But instead she says, not good. And suddenly, everything changes. Now you ask her why she isn't good. And she tells you. And you quickly find yourself in the midst of her pain. And you feel what she's feeling. And you hurt like she hurts. And the conversation is no longer brief and shallow like it's been for years. But now it matters. She matters. You matter. The fact that she decided to be honest with you matters. The thing that is happening between you matters. And that is, I think, kavod. We live in a light world, L-I-T-E, a world that's 
bombarded from 10,000 directions with advertisements and escapes in every conceivable form and television shows about people doing stupid, mindless things and elevators that play mind-numbing music versions of songs that we used to like before we heard them a million times. <laughs> and this noise in all of its visual and psychic forms can numb us. Make even a day like today just like every other day. As they all run together. But kavod, kavod is something else. It is that honor, that glory with which God has crowned us. It is what happens when the monotony is pierced, the boredom is hijacked, the despair is overpowered by the sense that something else is going on just below the surface, something that's bigger and wider and deeper and more powerful than anything you could ever imagine. Something that reminds you of your smallness, your frailty, your impermanence. It's an internal sense of reverence. It's that gut level awareness you're seized by that tells you, pay attention, this matters. It's God. It's God I'm talking about, friends. Whether these, these moments are earth-shatteringly loud and large or infinitesimally small and whisper-like, mere slivers you inadvertently stumble upon, moments when you're convinced even if you've been burned and let down and betrayed countless times, you're convinced that cynicism does not have the last word, that life is not random or meaningless or empty, but that what you do and how you feel and what you say and where you go and what you make of this life you've been given matters. It's what this college wants for you. This place, this community in which you've been formed to be civic-minded and compassionate and wise. It's God working in you, present in you, all of you, bringing together our bodies, our minds, our souls, our spirits, and all the parts and the pieces that make us us. As our eyes are opened to see the good the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the inspiring, and the gut-wrenching in all of life, God is with us. God is for us. God is ahead of us. Paul, in one of his letters to early Christians, encouraged them with words I want to use today to encourage you fascinating person. I am confident of this, that God who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. You are bristling with creative, explosive potential and possibility. The same creativity that formed the universe is unleashed in you, in us through our trust in what God is continuing to do in the world around us. This extraordinary energy that you have in all of its diverse and expansive forms is deeply personal and readily available and on our side. So as you leave this place and you descend Grimes Hill for the thousandth time, but now with a different goal in mind, not just to get to the bottom of the hill, but having come to know and live the Wagner plan for your life, remember that God will complete you 
fascinating you, that exotic cocktail of dust and quarks and blood and soul and all that can't be named containing infinite depth and dimension and spirit. And as you graduate, as you look today at your life, which God has crowned with glory and honor, I wonder if the best word I can offer you is to urge you to remember that it's a simple matter of saying yes over and over and over again a thousand times a day saying yes your willingness to consider that there may be untold power and strength and spirit right here in you right now right now as close as your next breath so this is not the same old graduation baccalaureate address about making something happen. It's about waking up to what's already happening. All around you, all the time. In and through and over fascinating you. Trusting that God is with you and ahead of you God who has crowned you with glory and honor. Congratulations. God bless you. Yes. Thank you.
Sardita Chaitanya is the chaplain associated with Wagner College for the Hindu tradition. Mr. Chaitanya is always willing to come to Wagner to provide spiritual mentoring to our Hindu student population, and for that we are very grateful. Mr. Chaitanya will lead us in a Hindu blessing. Greetings to all. I'm honored to be invited to be a part of this special function today. I'd like to congratulate all the graduating students and their parents, their families. I don't need to tell you how much you have to put in to get to this point, you know. For any success in life, one has to put in hard work, you know. And of course that's not enough. <laughs> one needs patience, one needs endurance, you need resources, <laughs> you need a lot of encouragement, moral, financial and so on, you know. Sometimes it also seems like in spite of all that you do, you feel, I've done what I have to do. Yet things don't seem to go right. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. As they say, you know, sometimes when it's your turn to get into the bus, the doors shut. <laughs> sometimes they open, you know. You miss the bus or you don't. So in spite of all that we do, there is always an unknown variable, you know. And this unknown variable we look upon differently, you know. Some people look upon it as chance, some people call it luck, some people call it fortune, <laughs> good or otherwise. And then there are others who look upon this slightly differently, you know. They recognize that there is a higher order that we are a part of, that even though not recognized or understood, always works. It works as sure as gravity works. You know, it is not biased, <laughs> it is fair, and it fulfills itself, you know. And that order, the one who recognizes, looks upon this unknown variable as grace. That's one word we use. And grace is also something which is not seen as arbitrary. But in our tradition, we look upon it as something that we invoke. We invoke by our prayers and that we invoke by living in harmony with this, with this higher order that is there around us. The more one is in harmony with it, the, one, the more one is graced, the more one is blessed, you know. You, when you invoke something, when we invoke it, then we evoke the grace, you know. So this, this is always true in life, you know. You will do a lot, I'm sure you will accomplish a lot, you'll be very successful. With one thing sometimes, to be successful, it's another thing to feel like a success, you know. Not everyone who's successful feels that they are successful. And then there are others who may not look so successful in the eyes of the world, but within they feel that their life is a success, you know. So thus there is so much to learn, there is so much to do. I wish you all the best and I pray to the Lord that you find all kinds of success in life and not only be successful but also feel like a success. Thank you. In the spirit of the humanist tradition, I'd like to read you a script from Bertrand Russell. To put his words in context, Dr. Russell was a professor at Cambridge and lived through two world wars. He understood the unique position the human civilization is in since the creation of nuclear weapons. 
Hear his words. Love is wise. Hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more and more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. But if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn the kind of charity and a kind of tolerance which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet. Dr. Russell's words and life are a reminder to us that it's important to critically examine beliefs and assumptions, both our own and those of others. But it is equally important to understand people, to give an honest attempt at seeing through their eyes and considering their perspectives. Seniors, at Wagner you have been given tools for both critical examination and developing empathy. May you see your role as a global citizen of a shared world and as one who brings peace. In the words of Mr. Russell, love is wise, hatred is foolish.
And now to lead us in a closing benediction is Father Anthony DeLuca. Father DeLuca is an ordained Syrian Orthodox priest and the chaplain to the college from that tradition. We're honored to have him with us today. My greatest fear was having to follow that act. <laughs> Dear graduates, do not be afraid. Reflecting over today's service, some moderns might call it a gathering of the five metaphors, Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish, Christian, Islamic. Each religion has its own metaphor expressing its attempt to understand ultimate questions based on faith. Now, metaphors, are they the really real? Well, at this very moment, these metaphors are in conflict throughout the world with devastating consequences. So I would say they do have some meaning. They also bring a great deal of consolation, hope, happiness, and security to billions of people. At the same time, they still leave unanswered many questions about the universe. Physicists or cosmologists, through science, attempt to discover the origins of the multiverse. Yes, multiverse, because cosmologists tell us there is more than the universe, the multiverse. And each discovery tends to bring forth more unanswered questions. And if I could offer a personal note for my own life. On the same day, I start with my religious experience, my metaphor, if you wish, but I know I have to transcend it in making sense of an ever-revealing cosmos before me. So I celebrate Mass in faith, and an hour later, my reason is still engaging in asking all kinds of explanations for the origins of the universe, the origins of the multiverse, and how I'm going to reconcile these two sides. Dear graduates, sometimes, and don't get upset or scared, uh, sometimes I do believe I'm living in a parallel universe. <laughs> More times than you want to believe. <laughs> I think the struggle between faith and reason will exist as long as we have the human mind. You know, your mind, the brain, consists of two spheres, the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere. The right hemisphere which deals with intuition, the symbolic, and faith. The left hemisphere which deals with the concrete, the specific, quantifying data, measuring data, reason. And they exist in you at the same time. And between them, there is a narrow tissue called the corpus callosum, which holds the two of them together. And if it didn't hold them together, you would split into two different people. Now you can get an idea, maybe on a biological level, of how complicated the issue is of faith and reason. When I was looking over these reflections, I said, could it be that the thousand years we have been struggling with this conflict over faith and reason may find its determinants within the, the human brain of its two components, its two spheres, and there'll always be a problem, and they'll always be looking for some sort of reconcilia reconciliation or some sort of integration. Fear not. Graduates, all during your life, you're going to come upon conflicting ideas. Maybe you remember from your psychology course or your bio course, or maybe you don't want to remember. <laughs> cognitive dissonance. Cognitive 
dissonance, excessive mental stress and discomfort experienced when you hold two or more contradictory beliefs at the same time. But I'm going to tell you that if you go through this, blessed are they who have suffered cognitive dissonance, for they shall behold the truth, not in a glass darkly, but then face to face. And fear not. It is good for us to be in this place. Rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. I have one regret today. I want to look around out here. I'm so happy to see all of you who are here, but I always have to think about all of those that are not here. And I think what the story is perhaps is that they may have experienced cognitive dissonance, got scared, and ran away. Maybe. Maybe we haven't done enough for them. Anyway, do not be afraid. I go before you always. Come follow me. Amen. <laughs>